G'day, I'm Dwayne. In today's video, we're going to go through each of the sheep handler models, explain the differences between all three automatic models, and then we'll demonstrate the operating features and modes of the sheep handler, and then we'll go over the accessories available for each of the models. So in the range, we've got three core cool models, the HD3, the HD4, and the HD6. So the numbers 3, 4, and 6 indicate how many ways you can draft with each model. Aside from the number of ways you can draft, the second difference with the HD3 model is you've got the spring-loaded backing flaps in the lead-up race, whereas the HD4 and HD6 models, you've got an automated hook in the lead-up race which comes down the back of the sheep, um, which is triggered by two sensors on the side of the lead-up race. So the third difference is what we call an auto-on-tilt-return feature. So pretty much this means that uh, if you're crutching, wigging, foot trimming, anything where you're tilting it, uh, when you get down to the upright position on the HD3, it's just going to hold it and then you just press the release button to release it. Whereas on the HD4 and the HD6 models, we can flick it to the auto on tilt return mode, which means when you get back down after tilting it, um, it will automatically release and open the gate and let the next one in. So now let's go over the features of the handler range. So starting at the back here, we've got the lead up race. So the two side panels of the lead up race are fully adjustable top and bottom. So you've got multiple holes along the top to V it in uh, just the right width. So when you've got those smaller lambs or bigger ewes, you can V it in so they don't, uh, don't turn around. Another feature of the lead up race is our double pins. This uh, greatly reduces the rattle. Uh, also, as with any of the key parts of the handler, we have the anti-jump bars, um, obviously to stop them jumping. So on the HD4 and the HD6 models, we have the anti-backing hook in the lead-up race. This is triggered by these sensors on the outside. And again, they're just magnets, so they, you can move them depending on the flow and the size of the sheep. So once I trigger the sensor, either one of them, this hook will come around, stopping them from backing out. Notice it's come round quite slowly. This is giving the sheep time to get in front of it before it comes around the back of them. If you have it springing around fast, it's just going to come into the side and be ineffective. Um, you've got three holes to choose from, so if you've got smaller lambs, you can bring it up further and, and lower down, and then also lower down and further back. So coming along, uh, we've got the what we call the auto gate. So this is the gate that separates the sheep as they're running in. So a couple of features, obviously you've got the anti-jump on here as well, because this will fling across to stop them from jumping out there. And then we've got this removable piece of plastic, depending on your task. So uh, if you're crutching or anything, you might want to have it in to stop this one seeing the one in the clamp area. But for anything else, you probably want to have it out, so for weighing or drenching or anything, so they can see straight through. There's multiple operating modes for the auto gate, which are all controlled off the dashboard switch. So opposite the auto gate, we've got another little gate. Uh, this can be simply pulled up and brought in. So for depending on your stock sizes or on how fast they're running in, um, if they're simply running too fast, then you can V it in just to slow them down a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, you can have it fully out if you've got bigger stock size. So behind the little gate here, we have the indicator stand. So that's where your screen goes. So moving forward, we have the clamp area. So this is where the animal actually gets caught. So just a quick overview on the dashboard here. It's nice and clearly laid out and clearly labeled what each switch is. So first I'll have our power switch, our button, turning it on and off. Next is our draft gate so we can manually draft using left or right. Uh, but just note that will override any of your auto drafting that the indicator does. Next up is release. So it's either in auto or manual, pretty straightforward. Any of your weighing and auto drafting is going to be in auto. Everything else will be manual. So drenching, crutching, vaccinating, anything where it's up to you to release it. The tilt, we can tilt it up and down, um, but pretty much you always use your remote or the foot pedal. The catch is in either auto or manual. So whether you want it to catch for you, or you can flick it to manual, so you do the catching. Um, and then the entry gate, we can shut it off like that, 
So if we're going for smoko or you need to go get more drench or something, you can shut it off so they aren't flying through. The rest of the features we'll cover in later in the video. Uh, and then we've got simply our catch, our manual catch and release buttons here. So whenever we want to catch it, we can press these buttons. Um, just on the hold pressure dial, you've got complete control of the pressure that you hold the sheep. Always start low, it doesn't need a lot of pressure. So if you're running smaller lambs, you can turn it down. If you're running bigger rams, you can turn it up. Just one thing to note on the hold pressure, if it's all the way down, and this is our most common phone call, when you clamp it, it doesn't clamp because it's got no air coming into the ram. So even if you have it up a little bit, it's still going to slowly clamp. So just make sure that's not all the way down. You've got at least some air coming into the ram. So next is the Magic Eyes, which is currently covered by the blue cover. So a couple of reasons for this. Number one, cheap chewing cables. Um, and also when you're traveling, it just helps keep the sensors in there if you ever go over a big bump and the magnets fall off. So we have four magic sensors, or what we call eyes. Um, they control the auto gate and then also the clamp, so when it clamps. So these are simply just magnets and you just move them depending on where you want to catch the animal. So the black sensors, they are the ones that control the catching. So depending on where you position them is where the sheep's going to get caught. So for example, something like crutching and you want the backside more out towards the right, um, then you just move these accordingly. The same with drenching, uh, you want the head out the front, then you move the black ones and one of the blue ones uh, further to the left so its head gets caught out the front. So the blue and the black sensors work together, so it's got to have at least one blue and one black to clamp. So if I put my finger in front of the blue sensor, it'll shut the gate, and then I put my finger in front of the black sensor, so it hasn't clamped yet, only when I put my finger in front of the black sensor, that's when it clamps. Same with, even though the black sensors are the catching eyes, if I put my finger in front of them, it still doesn't catch because I've only got my finger in front of one of the sensors. Once I do both, it clamps. So another thing to note with the blue sensors is it controls this gate here, but it also controls the anti-backing hook in the clamp area. So as long as my finger, or as long as the sheep is in the, in the clamp area, that'll stay around um, and stop it from backing back. So having the four magic eyes and the two heights, the two rails, that gives you complete control of catching different size stock. For example, if you're running uh, bigger rams with long legs, you probably want both these eyes in the top rail, so it's catching their body rather than reading between their legs. As opposed to if you're running smaller lambs and they're running with their heads down or slightly jumping a little bit, you would have one top and bottom. So it's always going to trigger at least one blue and one black, so it's going to get caught every time. And having the eyes on the side is actually a patent to design, which gives you unobstructed access to the animal overhead. So coming around to the back to the clamp wall, we have five different widths that you can set the clamp wall at, and there's also four different angles that you can set the ram um, for the crush wall to come over at. So having this completely adjustable Number one, was well, a number of reasons, but number one, it greatly increases the accuracy at which you catch the sheep. Because what you want is the wall to be doing minimal work, so you want it just wider than the width of the sheep. So it's only doing that much before it catches them. If you have it on a wider setting, uh, and you're running smaller stock, and the wall's doing that much work before it catches them, it's giving them all that time to run through before it gets caught. So that is crucial to how quickly you catch it and the, and the accuracy. You can have pinpoint accuracy how quickly you catch a sheep. Uh, another example of why this is a good feature is, say if you're running pregnant ewes, you can actually have the front of the wall in a narrower setting and have the back out so it's V'd. This means it's putting pressure on their shoulders rather than coming around on their sides. So another feature of the sheep handler range, it's available on all of the models, is the side tilt. Uh, this is controlled by either the dashboard switch, um, your foot pedal, or your radio remote. So a couple of points on the 
side tilt is you've got complete control of where you tilt it to, so you've got proportional control. So all you do is push the left foot pedal down and wherever I take my foot off the pedal it'll stop. So the benefit of having a proportional control on the side tilt uh, means for different height operators you can have different crutching heights. Um, also probably the most important benefit of this is being able to stop it just before it gets to 90 degrees. Now this means the sheep are a lot calmer um, as they tend to kick when they get all the way over to 90 degrees. Also yeah, after a bit of use you'll find you'll have a desired height for crutching um, and we're really able to maximise on that by taking a couple of the chain links out down the bottom so it maxes out at that exact height every time. So standard on the side tilt on all the sheep handle models is what we call the rear access flap. So if I tilt it over. So from here I'll just press this button to open it up. Um, and just note if you're crutching or foot pairing if you've got this open, um, just pin away this anti-backing hook here so it doesn't get in the way. So from here if you catch it in the right position you've got complete access to the back of the animal. Um, so you can get a good a full crutch and do a half belly crutch as well. So another optional upgrade with the side tilt is the front access flap. So this is a, our latest feature. Same as the rear flap, you just hit the button to operate it. So you've got complete access to the front of the animal um, for tasks such as getting to their front feet, foot trimming, um, wigging. And same thing, you just press the button to shut it or use your foot pedal to put it back down. Uh, also this is where the integrated EID reader runs around. So I open both of them and as we tilt it back down they'll automatically shut. So a unique feature to the HD4 and HD6 models is what we call the auto and tilt return feature. So this means after tilting it up, once we've finished our crutching, foot trimming, whatever we're doing, when we tilt it back down to the upright position so it's going to automatically release and then let the next animal in. So the crush wall releases, the auto gate opens up and allows them to keep on coming in. This means that generally when you're crutching or you're foot trimming you've got your, you've got your handpiece in your hands and generally your hands are tied up. So it just means that you don't have to release it yourself, it's just one less step so the machine does it for you. So the midsection or the clamp area of the handler is our weighing zone. So our load bars are down the bottom here, so you've got one there and then the second one there. And our weighing zone is anywhere in between the back of this plate here and the front of the front plate there. So having that extended weighing zone means that the, the clamp area is much more compact, so it means to get more access to the animal. So if you get some sheep that are running faster through and they get caught a bit later or they get caught a bit earlier because they're walking a bit slower, then as long as their feet are anywhere between those two points then it's going to get weighed exactly the same. So next is the draft module in front of the handler. So this is mainly controlled by your indicator, but it is able to be controlled by your radio remote. Otherwise you can operate it using the switch on your dashboard. The three and the four way draft module looks much the same. Um, you have this access gate here on the left. So if you need to get right in there for drenching. Um, on the HD3, this is also a manual access gate. So for example, if you had a second person there and they were vaccinating and you were drenching here, you can have one person on both sides. Whereas on the HD4 model, this gate here has actually got a ram underneath, so we can operate it there. So how it works is the draft directions is one is straight ahead, two is to the left, three is to the right, and then on the HD4 model, obviously, the fourth is to your immediate right. Another point to note on the draft gauge is just how nice and wide they are. So when you open it up, you've got a lot of clear access there um, for any size stock to run through, keeping your flow nice and consistent. So as with the rest of the handler from start to finish, it's all rubber lined on the bottom, keeping it nice and quiet. And then also at the front of the draft module, you have the gate pins to easily put some temporary panels to. Now let's take a look at our four operating modes for the sheep handlers. 
So number one, we've got our auto mode. This is for your typical weighing and drafting. So I'll trigger the sensors and get a weight. So it's auto, it's auto release, it's drafted. But because I've got my finger in front of the blue sensor, it still, still thinks there's a sheep in there. So notice how the auto gate hasn't opened yet and let the next one in. Also, our hook has stayed round, so meaning it can't back back and get re-caught. So once I clear the sensor, it thinks the sheep has left the crate, then the auto gate will open up and let the next one in. So that's number one. Number two is what we call our auto fast mode. So this is, uh, if you've got good flow, this is how to get a few more sheep per hour, like more numbers per hour. So how that works is, again, I'll trigger the sensors. Get a weight. So the auto gate and the clamp wall open at the same time, regardless if I'm still in front of the sensor. Our third operating mode is called the open mode, which is a continuous flow. This means if when you're drenching and you're not worried about weight, you've got continuous flow, they're flying right, right behind each other. So if I put my finger in front of the blue sensor, normally this gate would shut and separate them. So all it controls is the anti-backing hook. So it doesn't separate any of them, it allows them to run up right behind each other. It's obviously going to catch it automatically, but it's just not going to separate them. Uh, the fourth operating mode is our manual catch mode. So this means we've put the, put the catch switch to manual. So this means it's now up to me when it, when it gets caught. So either I can catch it on my remote, the foot pedal, or the button on the dashboard. A typical, typical example of this is when you want to clean up a couple in the mob, the odd few. All you do is simply run them through. None of the sensors are going to work. They'll be continuously running through, and then you see a dirty one, and bang, I'll clamp it. Clean him up, let him go, and again, this is continuous flow, and you're not clamping every sheep. So let's give it a go, weighing some sheep now. So we're going to start off with the now first operating mode, the auto mode. So today we've got a little bit bigger use. Um, so I have the, both the blue sensors on the top rail, so it's reading their body. Um, depending on the flow, we'll see how they go. But I'll typically start off by having the sensors about there, just to give it enough time to get in front of the, the anti-backing hook before it clamps. And it's a nice central location, location, so it's in the middle of the weighing zone, nice and accurate weights. So we'll give that a whirl. So that there was the operating mode number one, the auto mode. So in that mode, the gate was only reopening when the sheep left the crate. Simply to go to the next step, to the second operating mode, you go to auto fast. So just flick it into the second mode there. And now this gate will open as soon as it's released. So the next thing to demonstrate is something like a sail bung, just a quick, quick clean up. Um, so what we do, obviously want it getting caught a little bit earlier. So we move, a good, move our catching sensors earlier. All depends on the fly on how far or forward or how far back you set them. We'll give it a go about there. You pretty much just want it catching with its backside out there. That's perfect. So from here, we can just fold that little gate away, so it gives us nice access here. And then if you want any more access, you can always open the, open the flap as well. So how to crutch is similar setup to sail crutch. The sensor's in pretty much the same position. Um, we've got our foot pedal plugged into the tilt, and obviously our release is in manual because you don't want it releasing on you. So now we can let the first one in.
that's pretty much perfect. So from here we can use our foot pedal to tilt it over. We've got our anti-backing hook disengaged. I've just put the pin in front of it there. So now when we open it up, it's not, it's not in the way. And you've got all that access there to give it a good crutch. And then to close it and tilt it back down, simply hit the right pedal. And release. And you're ready to do the next one. So another task we can perform on this one is foot pairing. So what you want to do is move the, the black catching sensors a little bit to the left. So you're trying to catch it pretty much bang in the middle. See how we go there. So it's got the animal held again, we can tilt it over. Now we can get to the rear feet first. We recommend only opening one flap at a time. Quite easily get to the back feet, close that flap, open the front, and we can get to the front feet as well. So same thing as the rear flap, when I go to tilt it back down, that's going to automatically shut. So to set it up for drenching, we're just using a traditional manual gun, so weight isn't an issue. Uh, what we do is we want it catching a little bit later so it heads out the front. So we'll move these black sensors a little bit to the left. Generally about there. Um, another thing we need to do is swap the foot pedal over. So previously it was in the hoist. Now we'll put it in the catch and release. So for your traditional drenching, just using a manual gun, uh, we can flick this entry gate to open. So that's our continuous flow mode, third mode. Uh, and that means this, in, this auto gate won't separate them. But when they trigger the blue sensor, the backing hook will still come around, stopping them from backing out. This is the fastest way to get through as many as you can an hour. So as you can see, it's caught with its head out the front. Now I can give it a drench, use my foot pedal to release. And the next one's right behind it. Again, caught, drench, release. So when using the calibrated dosing gun, we want to put it into either auto or auto fast, so it's separating them. Because weight is crucial, you don't want the next one hard up against it and leaning on the weigh platform and affecting the weight. So the eye sensors, they're exactly the same as your traditional drenching setup. We only change it to either auto or auto fast. So another thing we can use the sheep handler for is a dirty, clean draft. So this is where we use our remote to draft off the, into two lines, into the dirties and the cleans. So all we do is flick our catch to manual and our entry gate to open. And this means there'll be continuous flow and it's just up to you to operate the draft gates, stand back in the race, see which ones are clean and dirty and draft them off accordingly. So just by pressing one button, we can control a two-way draft. An important thing to note when running smaller stock is because it's not clamping, uh, the flow is going to be very fast. So when running smaller stock, you want to you want to bring this gate in a bit to slow them down. Otherwise, it'll be running too fast for you to operate it. 
So now we'll talk about a couple of the accessories available on each of the handler models. Uh, firstly we have the trailer option here. Um, so number of features on the trailers, you get this work platform that comes with the trailer model. Um, this is great for when you've got boggy conditions out in the paddock or in the yards, it just provides a nice solid platform for you to work on. Um, it's got a, a subframe that runs along the length of the whole handler. Two things, this is good for when you have uneven ground, um, because you've got a nice solid base, you're still going to get accurate weighing. And number two, when you're towing it, um, the stress of towing is on the subframe rather than the handler. So all your comp crucial components like your load bars, um, they're not going to be affected by towing along a bumpy road. Another thing you get with the trailer model is this this shearing plant stand here. So you can hang your handpiece on it, obviously because you'll be, be at the back here for crutching. Otherwise we can move it forward and plug it into the front of the platform where we can hang our drench back off. Around the side, to set up and pack up, we've got a hand pump that is easily jacked up to slide the wheels on. Another good point of the trailer is that the handler is fully set up on the subframe, ready to go, so that's how you tow it around. So there's no folding out of lead-up race, so this is all the draft gates. So you can easily back it into it, hits the race, jack it up with the hand pump, which is around the other side, take the wheels out and lower it down in, into position. So there's no, no guesswork of where you have to back it up to. Another option we have to move the sheep handler around if you need to move it from property to property is what we call the skid frame. This is more aimed at people that only move it about once or twice a year. You've got the same 75 by 50 chassis running along the bottom of the whole handler, um, but instead of the wheels, it has fork holes in it, so you can pick it up with your front end loader, a forklift, telehandler, whatever, and load it onto your own flatbed trailer. And from there you can take it and unload it to wherever you want. The next option available on all of the sheep handlers is what we call the anti-jump bar, which is this thing here. So, as the name suggests, it stops them from jumping out. But also when you've got those taller sheep that stick out the top of the clamp area, when you're tilting it over, it just helps hold them in there so they don't fall out. So another option for all the handlers is what we call the daggers mate. This can be either mounted to your lead up race or slide into your daggers pole. Pretty much this connects to your shearing plant and when you put your handpiece into it, it just shuts off the power. Another option that's available on all of our sheep handler range is the integrated RFID reader. This has got the best read range on the market, it's tuned in-house and because it's got this insulated piece here, there's no interference with the steel framework like a traditional bolt-on panel reader. So you've got excellent read range, doesn't matter what side of the head that the tag's in, what ear, it's still going to pick it up from both sides. So if you want your sheep handler as purely a handling machine and you're not worried about weighing and drafting, there is the option to get from the lead up race right to the end of the, the clamp area, to the front of this plate. So you can get it without the draft gates, without load bars, so it's just purely as a handler for drenching, vaccinating, crutching, foot pairing, all your handling needs. So it would look exactly the same up until here, we would just stop there and it wouldn't have the draft gates. We do provide a skid frame option, so the skid frame will stop at the last feet there and go all the way to the back, again with four coals to pick it up with your front end loader. So another option that we have that is quite rare but it is available is the left hand versus right hand operation machine. So this here is a traditional left hand, what we call the left hand operation machine. So the sheep are flowing from right to left through the handler. But we do do ones, if you're, if you're a left-handed crutcher, you, you, we do do ones that it'll, the lead-up race will be here and they flow from left to right. So you can imagine when it gets caught, the backside of the sheep is going to be out here. So when it tilts over, it's going to be suited for a left-hand crutch. So unless you can crutch both hands, if you're, if you're a right-hander, it probably won't be ideal. It's more suited for the left-handers. So to run the sheep handlers, we need a power source and an air source. So for the power source, it comes with an option to either run it off 240, so mains power, or a 12 volt battery. We highly recommend 240 when available, especially if you're using the tag reader, as it can chew up a bit of power, and you don't want to be 
hoping your battery's got enough power for the session. As for the air source, uh, we recommend a, around a 12 CFM air compressor with a 50 litre tank. The bigger the tank, the less often it will run. So once you've finished your session and you're ready to pack up your handler, what we do is we first fold up our work platform. Then we come round to the back. Use our hand pump to jack it up so it can slide the wheels on. So now we're ready to slide our wheels on. So locked in place, we've just got to do the other side. So now we'll just pull our drawer, drawer bar out. Put our pin in. Now we'll just flick our bypass lever around to lo lower it back down. So the beauty of it being manual is if you wanted to go and set up out in the paddock the day before, you don't need to take a generator or anything to go and set it up. At Tapari, all of our equipment is made in-house in New Zealand at a manufacturing facility. It's all made using Australian steel, which is fully hot dip galvanised after fabrication. We deal directly with our customers, so if you want any more information on anything, if you've got any questions or you've got some pricing queries, feel free to get in contact with us today.